But, you know, we work it out. We co-parent. You get that phone call? Let me see my baby. Come jump through the window. No, he lives on me. Who lives with you? Yeah. See that? There we go. <laughs> Can I order some appetizers? <laughs> it's about to get interesting. I live with my baby daddy. How far apart is your rooms? Can you hear the other girl moaning? Can you, I mean, what, what's, that, what's that? We don't bring people to the prison end. But well, is that the part where y'all not living together no more? Or is that just the part where you just, what? 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 I'm saying, where you at, Sean? Shut up, Marcus. <laughs> this is very interesting to me. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little bit. I'm nervous. It's been eight years since I've been dating this man's daughter. Today, I'm about to finally get to meet him. What should I call him? Mr. Riley. He's a badass producer. He worked with everyone in the industry. He's won every award. And he's still managed to hold down his player card. You dig what I'm saying? Be a gentleman. All right, I got you. I'm definitely a daddy's girl, so this meeting is beyond nerve-wracking. I kept my dad and Dre apart because I didn't want him making judgments on our relationship. This time, I think Dre and I are really gonna make it work, so it's time to face the music. My dad's coming. What's up? <laughs> How you doing? Mr. Pleasure. Riley, nice to meet you. Pleasure. You know the feeling that you get when you see the cops in your rearview mirror? That's the feeling that I'm feeling right now, you dig? I mean, this isn't just a dad. This is Teddy No Diggity Riley. Let the grilling begin. Today, it's just the evaluation day. OK. One thing I didn't know was y'all were seeing each other. <laughs> she didn't tell you? Well, tell me, tell me about this, you know. It's been like seven years we've been knowing each other. It's on and off it's that entire off. time. On and off. Why did y'all keep waking up? I mean, he cheated before, but you know my patience for certain situations, and I would be over it. My thing is, I don't want to see this being an off and on situation. More recently, we've been wanting to take it serious, and you know, she's thinking about moving in, her and Cam moving in. You know, I really care about her. I really do love her. It's very serious what me and her have. I think that you and I should talk. You want to excuse us? Excuse you two? Yeah. Oh, God. OK. You, you okay? have a man to man you talk. You OK? I'm good. OK. I'm really good. I'll be. Damn. It's like that. Nia got to leave the table. It's about to get real. I hope this man still has some dignity left after this conversation. You feel me? So there's some things I want to know. Where'd you meet at? Well, I met her through my old DJ. And you know, she came over to the crib one night. You know, I fell in love with her since then. Can I have relations on the first day? Is that a trick question? He asked me if I had sex with his daughter on the first night. So I just told him what I supposed to tell him. Uh, I want to say no. I've been in the business almost 27, 28 years. I lived that life. I've been to it, you know, I've done it. You know, I lived it. So living it, I can tell her every move that a man would make. You know what I'm saying? Because I did it. When it comes to that, you know, I got some sort of concern, you know. I've seen on YouTube stuff with females videotaping you and when you under the influence of drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, anything can happen. I made mistakes, you know, when I was younger. But yeah, now I'm in a, I believe I'm in a different position. Those type of things shouldn't be a problem now. You're still on tour, you're still out there. And what's going to be a confirmation for me to know that they are gonna be all right. With me being on the road, my whole focus is just on this album, on making this money, and coming back to her, you know. I wanna make sure she's happy, you know. I wanna make her happy. I wanna be there for Cam. Being around Cam, I want her to see that father figure from you, even though you haven't had the experience. Out of all this time, she see that, you know, I'm really trying. Or well, I wouldn't be here right now. For me to be here, it's, it's got to be something. My concern is, is she safe with you? We got a lot of proving to do.
You know what, messy ass Morgan is out of my life for good. I know she been gossiping, telling Princess all my business, and I know she been telling Tierra about my too. But now Morgan's got me questioning Princess's loyalty, and that bothers me because she's supposed to be my girl. But there's one person that's been loyal with me from day one, and always will be. Good to see you, B. Brandy been out of town working, so we really haven't got a chance to talk about everything that's been happening in my life. How you doing? For real, for real. It's been rough. There's so many people try to make people feel a certain way inside of their own camp. Like everything bad start happening. Can I just be completely honest with you? It's you. It's your choices. Like you put yourself in positions where the worst comes out. I talked to mom. What did she say? She was just like concerned about my environment. She was talking about how she liked Tierra, and it's like it was just weird because it's like. I ain't even with her. My mom's is just worried about who I got around. I don't like your environment either. I don't think it's healthy. See, my mom and Brandy can talk about my environment all they want. I know they talking about princess, and I know they some Tierra lovers. And guess what? I'm man enough to admit that I love Tierra too. But we got to a place where we just couldn't get it right. And before things got too heated, it had to end. I'm putting all ownership on you. Like, cause I feel sure. like the only way we can change is taking full responsibility. I'm starting to make my adjustments. I need to go back a little bit and make sure I deal with certain things like the way I deal with Tierra, all the yeah, crazy you did apologize to her. For I that. did it. You apologize. What did I what just happened? seen her at the Young Bird party. And she just didn't take it well. And then she started telling me about how I'm not happy and how people telling me about me and Princess and what me and her got going on. And I'm just like, what is you talking about? Like, Do you uh, love Princess? Do you, of course this, I love is, Princess. I know you love her, but like, do you love her? Like on some, this is someone you want to spend your life with. Yeah, we straight, like, listen, B, like, when you in a relationship, you gotta work out the kinks. If you can't go through the ups and downs and you can't be together, the only person that's really trying to f up is Morgan. I don't want Morgan talking to Princess. Like, why this. is Morgan in okay. everybody's business? I know. This is what like, I don't Morgan get. Like, why is she? Listen, but Morgan why? is messy as <laughs> Look, this is no, your this, assistant. Like, no, this is this your ain't people. My assistant. But Morgan's been fired. Since when? Morgan's been fired for weeks now. Let me just tell you right now, brother. All the women in your life, from Princess to Morgan, all of them are talking to all of them. You can't trust nobody. Princess is listening to somebody. What Princess is allowing, it's gonna break you guys apart, and it's gonna be a public shenanigan. That's you my word for, you, for, for your you experience. It's not gonna be that, you know why? Because as long as I can make my adjustments, then it's gonna be cool. With these relationships that's going on, that everybody trying to come in here and say this and say that about what somebody said and what about another person said, it just gets confusing. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be watching. Now, I'm gonna stay on you, period. The phone at Bessie, but I had a screen, oh. Yo, girl, wasn't supposed to text me. You wanna know how I know what I know? So I'm here in Atlanta with the myth, the legend, my dog, Rose. He's really vibing the first single, so we have a lift off, okay? Maybach music, Maybach music. You better believe that. You know, I'm gonna be releasing my fourth album. And, you know, it's my debut on Maybach Music. You know how big this is for you right now? It couldn't come at a better time. Congratulations on the newborn. Oh, thank you, day. homie. <laughs> thank you. My wife, you doing? She excellent. She ain't I'm... mad at me. No, 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 no. Fatherhood has really shifted my paradigm. I never really fully understood, you know, when people would meet me and they would show me their kids. I get it now. And, you know, it's contributed in the best way to my career. I never had my own family, you know what I mean? So to leave little man and, you know, change the transition from being at the crib and now, you know what I mean, from family man to my music. I'm happy that I get to get back in and play this music and this record is so important to music and the R&B just in general. Believe that to the game. To the game. I'm not doing things to be the hottest in the game. I'm doing it for my son. And it's motivation to just work harder. It's your first MMG release. It's your first release in a second. You saw the vision when nobody else did. You better believe it. Thank you, big homie. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Love, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna stay on my grind, people. Yes, because I want to take care of my family the way they deserve to be taken care of. They are the reason why I do what I do, because none of it means anything without family. Play that one more time. Turn that back. Yeah.
I'd like to thank my special guest, Ray J, for coming by the GGN News Network. Until we meet again, same dog channel, same dog time. DPG, see ya. Yo, I'm finishing up this podcast with my cousin Snoop. Now, Snoop's my real cousin. He ain't, he ain't my play cousin. My aunties and his aunties is aunties, and my cousins is his cousins, cuz. You know what's up. It's rolling the back, man. I know he bugged out when he heard Princess fell in the pool, and I always keep it 100 with him. So right now, I gotta explain myself. This is the thing, Don. When my girl was talking to Morgan, and I don't appreciate that. Mm -hmm. My girl's supposed to be ride or die. We in the bed talking. You ain't supposed to go tell nobody about nothing. She went back and told mother Morgan about everything we was talking about, trusted in her, and then found out Morgan was good for nothing and she went back and told Tierra everything. Princess make me feel like I can't trust her no more. Trust is everything, you know, because the minute that's broken is the minute you gotta really start to feel, is this worth me spending the rest of my life with? If you would've asked me if me and Princess was gonna get married and have babies before this Morgan thing happened, I would've said, hell yeah. But you know what? Nothing's more important than loyalty. And Princess has not been there. Y'all be moving too fast with these girls, man. We want wives, but we chasing video girls. We gotta search for what we want. What's your relationship with, with Tierra like? Because to me, it just feel like she was the one who was really, really down for you. I told you my family was Tierra lovers. And you know what, when I think about it, there's a reason for that. Tierra and I, we broke up because she had violent tendencies. But Tierra always stayed loyal, she always stayed down, and she always kept it 100. Despite the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, like, she was more of a friend for you. Yeah, she was a friend. And I heard her real bad. What you looking for in life right now is a friend. I got my mom, I got my dad, I got my sister, I got Snoop, I got everybody talking about Tierra. And now that I think about it, I'm thinking about her too. Is that the power of suggestion? Or was she just looking that good at Young Berg's party? Or am I waking up from a spell saying, what the f have I done? When I look back into time and I go, damn, when I was with Tierra, it was a whole different kind of thing. She keep popping back up in my mother head. She ain't popping up by accident, it's because she meant for you. Real I got a lot of thinking to do, man. You a man, that's what we do, we do man. Wrong man. Love you, boy. Sugar, babe. I guess high off your love and don't know how to behave. I pour wine in the tub and we could drown in the grave. I'm on top of it all, baby. We in Miami right now on the set of my new video, Brown Sugar. The honeys is here. The brown sugars is everywhere. Lil Wayne is here. It's off the chain. Brown sugar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Ray drags me to Miami for his video shoot. Doesn't even invite me to set. It's almost like he's keeping me cooped up in a hotel just like he does me at home. But even though I was never actually going to Vegas with Tierra, this Miami trip did give me a reason to call the Vegas trip off. And now I'm just wondering if the rat trap really actually did work. First, I walk in on my husband surrounded by all these trifling, vulture-ass, thirsty Beckys. Second, he comes home and throws my wedding ring at me. Third, he has the audacity to drive off on my ass, his wife. Needless to say, things have been real tense around here. Hey, my beautiful Tamika. I feel so disrespected, and it is very hard for me to forgive my husband. So I called up my girl Tiny, and I asked her to make time ASAP. Thank God I wasn't calling you to bail me out of jail. The what? The other day, I'm looking at the baby. He playing with something shiny on the floor. I look, I said, oh, that's daddy's ring. And I said, I'm going to where he's at. What happened? I just bust open the fucking door, and this <laughs> is sitting down right in there, four girls and an ugly ass Becky with her hand on his arm. Bitch, that's a no-no. I would have been, girl, what? He does not come home that night. Nope. I try to talk to him about everything. Next thing you know, we go from talking about it, and I think he's kind of listening, 
to him flipping the whole shit on me. What do you in feel about defense, his though, In his defense, though, in Max's defense, here you, go. you will blow it up you and go. you will do some extra shit that's not necessary. You can nag sometimes oh. and you can't just point the finger all the time. You have to be able to take some of the blame. You're a pretty different young lady. <laughs> Maybe Tiny is right. I was a little bit over the top. And Max should not have thrown his wedding ring. But if we're gonna move forward from this, I need to be a woman and make things right. Our vows was through better or worse. Yeah. And we done been through worse, and I'm willing to work on better and not focus on the worse. Yeah, I'm all for it. You put it in the words the right way, it could touch you. You always get me right, and I'm about to bust down and realize that it's me too, and you see still a boss how that though, baby. Don't, don't, don't let that go nowhere. <laughs> when we sat down together, Dre said some pretty foul to me, and that's not cool. So I'm taking some time apart to do something that I wanted to do for a while. Today I'm throwing my first Mommies and Mimosas event for moms like me to mingle a bit. Oh, <laughs> just a little. Hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Really cut. What are you doing here? I definitely didn't invite my dad to the event, and I'm pretty sure he's not here for the mimosas. But I do know my sister has been telling him what's been going on between me and Dre, and he might not be his favorite person right now. I've been worried about you, so I had to come here and I had to come and see you. So what about your relationship with Soulja Boy? I hear so many things about this guy with other women. People say stuff. You know that more than anybody. This situation with this girl that he supposedly messed with, is it something that's true? What is it? I mean, parts of it could be true, but she's not a real issue for me. I just really feel like I know it. I know, and I understand that. You deserve that. better. Everyone says I deserve better, and I get that. I understand that. And we're, we're not perfect, but we're working on it. So it's like... What he does is bad, but I can deal with that. But you don't have to. I don't have to. No. I don't have to, but it's I mean, I wasn't all that goody two-shoes with your mom. Oh, I know. I feel like in any situation, if the good outweighs the bad, I'll take that. And I know he accepts Cam, and he's great with Cam. He's better with Cam than I am sometimes because my patience is, like, gone. This is what you want? Mm-hmm. I appreciate that everybody, including my dad, wants to look out for me. But at the end of the day, it's my life. And I'm pretty sure my dad can relate to some of the Dre has put me through. So if I decide to accept Dre for who he is and spend my life with him, that's my choice. And people need to respect it. If you got it, and you say you got it. I do. I'm going to leave this in your hands. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love you. I love you, too. engagement party and all of our friends and family are here to celebrate but instead my mind is thinking about this whole prenup situation that Ray threw at me if Ray really thinks that this is gonna be forever then why do we have to prepare for the worst you look handsome everybody came through yeah what's the, what's the matter I mean I just you know I am still thinking about the conversation we had the other day it's hard for me to like be happy just let God do it, do it. Let's God put our prenup together? Come on. Sonia isn't just gonna get away with this. This is my relationship with Ray, not Sonia's. If a prenuptial agreement is required to be a Norwood, well then maybe I don't need to be one. Googly! Rocky! I need to steal Frankus for a second. Frankie. Sonia. <laughs> In your own. I mean, I'm happy, but, you know, I do have some stuff on my mind. What? He just, like, randomly asked me if I want to get a prenup. And I feel like your mom is the one who told him to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's... I'm team Princess and Ray, so I think that you guys should talk about it. I think you should be completely honest with him about how it makes you feel. Yeah. Even about my mom, you know, I think you should tell her too. You've seen it get ugly. Like, you know, you've been I there know, in our I was kind of pulling you over to ask you that I'd be a bridesmaid <laughs> and I just <laughs> popped up on a, a deep conversation. What is that? Actually, I would love for you to be my maid of honor. 
Maid of honor, are you serious? Princess. Are you serious? I will, that would mean everything to me because I, I look at you as a sister. I really do, and we are here for you. You are family to us, okay? And that's just it. Thank you. you you're the prettier version of us, darling. <laughs> have any siblings and I've always seen Brandy as my sister. So of course I want her to be my maid of honor. She's been there for Ray and I through all of our ups and downs. Now her mother on the other hand, that's a whole different ball game. Freddie has a couple days off from his tour so he's flying into town so we can sit down and meet face to face. Part of me is anxious, part of me is ambivalent, part of me wants to give him a big hug, part of me wants to punch him in the face. And I cannot decide which of the four is the strongest emotion. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, sorry. It's long overdue for us to sit down and talk in person about this life-changing event that's about to happen to both of us. Glad that we're able to sit and talk now. When you first called, I was a little skeptical. I wasn't really sure what to think. No. We here now. How long are you going to be here? I think I'll leave tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, go to Texas. So you're going to be back before the baby's born then? Yeah, of course. That's like one of the main reasons why I wanted to talk to you. That's something I want to do. Like, I want to be her father. I want to be the one when she gets older, that's my daddy. Yes, I, hi. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. But I do want to know, like, what changed? Like, what made you? It was just like, I just had to man up. I mean, like, you know, that's basically what it is. Like, either you was going to accept it or you wasn't, you feel me? And like I tell you, like, just let me thank you for accepting it. After all of the hurt and embarrassment that Willie has put me through, I really haven't been quick to admit to myself that I'm going to be dealing with this man for the rest of my natural life. I don't think that he can ever fully understand how stressful he's made this situation and how dark it's gotten for me. But the fact that he's even acknowledging it, it's very helpful, so we'll see. I didn't think we would get to this point, to be honest with you. I just think we should have just, at least just talked or something. But how? Like, we couldn't even have a conversation without a hundred curse words. It was very, it was very difficult. <laughs> I definitely want you to know that I'm gonna work with you to make sure, like, you know, you can see her as much as you can, and I'm not gonna make it difficult for you, even though you made it difficult for me. Um, I just appreciate the place that we, where we are right now. And I just wanna grow from there and build from there and be like the coolest freaking parents like ever. Thank you for letting me show you that I really wanna be her, her dad. This is the guy that I knew and was dating and it's perfect, but why couldn't he have acted like this for those 1,738 months I've been pregnant? You let me go 70% of the way by myself and now you're jumping in? It's like refreshing, but I don't know, bruh. You're changing the poop diapers. First three months, I do believe I'm gonna still be on tour. Oh, wow. But what you can do is you can Snapchat me those diapers. I can Snapchat you the diapers. <laughs> oh, okay. Take five, man. Hey, you're working. What's up, mama? Hey, How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I've been working on getting my career back on track, so I'm going to meet with my old friend, Brian Michael Cox. He's really big in the R&B world. He's won about eight Grammys, and he worked with me on my first album. He always keeps it real with me. I wanted to talk to you because I know you've known me from the beginning mm -hmm. of my career, yeah. and I'm just ready to get back there, and I just... I want someone to be very, very honest with me. Do you think I could do it again? Do you think that it's possible? If we take a look back on, you know, what happened, you know, you signed a Def Jam, signed a Rockefeller, you put a record out that was a hit. The potential was crazy. Yeah. And for it to stop kind of like suddenly, out of nowhere, you know what I mean? You, know, you had I this mean, record. I mean, just like, bam. You know, literally, one day it was yeah, this, this and the, the next, next day it was something mm -hmm. totally different. Jay-Z signed me to Rockefeller when I was 16 years old. And in the middle of recording my second album, I was released from my contract. One minute I had everything, the next minute it was all gone. 
And since then, I've been trying to prove to people that I have what it takes and I'm worth another shot. L.A. had a quote about him making a misstep in regards to making you a priority over Rihanna. This L.A. Reid comment comes up all the time. He signed me and Rihanna at the same time. He said something like he regretted not paying more attention to Rihanna or something like that. I don't really know, because at the time I didn't pay attention. To be honest with you, I never even gave myself a chance to feel anything about it, because when you think about what he said, that's pretty heavy. Tell me, like, if you were in a room with a bunch of industry people mm -hmm. and my name was brought up, mm -hmm. what would the conversation be? I think people would say that you were crazy. I think all the questions would be, like, why is she on this blog? Why is she acting crazy? I know that I haven't represented myself in the best way possible. I get it. And I know that that's not me. That's not who I am. You have an opportunity to change that. The most forgiving thing that could ever happen is putting out some great music. Yeah. Right now, you're in a really interesting position because you have a platform Right. People know your story. Now you have to work harder than you've ever worked before. And people, other creatives that see that, if they see you helping yourself, they're gonna come, they're gonna come on in. This is why I came to be Cox, because he's not gonna blow smoke up my ass and he's not gonna kiss it either. He's 100% right. If I put out good music, then people will forget the BS. <sighs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate this conversation. This fire, my guy. <laughs> I'm trying to get this little mixtape together for the uh, before we do the album, you know. Try to keep the fans happy, you feel me? This, I know it's full of straight heat. It's been a while since I came game with something, so I'm trying to do something different for him, give him a little different flow, you feel me? I got it. How long you in LA? Uh, right now, I'm only out here for like a couple days. Yo, you spoke to my secret? Yo, man, last time we talked wasn't really that good. That's why I just want to make this shit, like, with her, you feel me? Like, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. Like, I don't want to be in love with you. I don't want to be in fake love. I don't want to be in three month love, whatever you want to call it. It was never that. It was a three day weekend. You forgot I was there with Shaq. Yeah, that's crazy. She said I was looking for a house with her. Like, I was never looking for no house with you. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be my daughter's father. Right now, the way she want me to be Kari's father, I don't want to be it that way. You feel what I'm saying? Because every single time me and her get together, man, even if it's 10 minutes, it's just like a story go up. Betty Wap, Masika, da, 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 da. She let the world know. So for you to think that you gonna bring me down because of, of what you telling the world, you can tell the world all you want. They ain't gonna help you be a better mother. My daughter mother don't complain. My son mother don't complain. If my daughter was sleep back in Jersey, I'm not coming over to your house at no two in the morning. I'll see you tomorrow. And there's no problem with that. She have no problem. With you, it goes on the internet. Probably, like, what right. the f You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it just don't make no sense. I hung around her. The whole nine months she was pregnant. I was gonna keep it mutual. I wasn't even gonna get into the middle of it. But like I said, you my so I'm gonna keep you updated. I'm telling you, it's, it's all one plan. Our one plan all revolves back to the same dog. I don't make no sense though, man. Money, ruin your relationship, and ruin your reputation. But money, she could have the money, because hey, when we was getting along, it was simple. It was simple. Got the crib, I spent like $30,000 on my daughter in one day. It's cool though, like everything comes to the light. If this is what she want to do, this is how she want to live her life. She want to base her life off of Fetty Wap, an artist, you know what I'm saying? Because Fetty Wap ain't no person, man. You know what I mean? Like, Fetty Wap just a n that make music. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fetty Wap just a name, that's an image, it's a brand, a dude with one eye. Like, I don't know me, I'm willy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I do what I gotta do because I don't got time for the extra. The only thing that you can say about me is, oh, he don't come out here. You damn right I don't come out here. Because every time I come out here, I don't leave happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't with that. But yo, like, my loyalty is going to be with my daughter. You know what I'm saying? So no matter how she make me look, I'm still going to be there for her. Whenever Carver gets to that point where she needs to go to her daddy, like, I'm always going to be there. You feel me? Even if me and her not seeing eye to eye right now, like, that's going to be my daughter for the rest of my life. All right. We're not a family. She's your family and I'm your baby father.
do I'll always call Princess and I, we've been through some highs and lows over these past four years. I mean, I wouldn't even think we would make it to this point, but I'm glad we did. Throughout all the trials and tribulations, there's one thing I never doubted, and that's our love for each other. And now we get to celebrate that and spend the rest of our lives together. And be the one to brighten up your day. Yeah, yeah. And the point of it all is I love you. everything to me. So having my dad marry us and Brandy sing for our first dance, I mean, it's so special. The sky above our blue. Now that my mom flipped it around and gave us her blessings, nothing can stand in the way of our happiness. It's great to feel like I have a new family. And after talking to Sonia earlier, I'm starting to feel a lot more welcome as a Norwood. And the most special part about it is that we have everyone we love most here to support us. I looked at you. It feels surreal to finally call Princess my wife. And I'm just taking it all in. Now it's time to turn up and celebrate our love with the rest of our family and friends and start a new life together being there. I'm so proud of the ways Ray and I have both grown this past year. I'm sure we'll be tested at times, but I know that the love and respect we have for one another is strong enough to see us through anything. Cause you are mine, LA. too short, then came in town and I'm with my cousin, about to hook up and do some shots. Too short is an Oakland OG, so I decided to go get some Oakland advice and see what kind of game he had for me. I still remember the first time I met this, it was the barbershop. Bow, when I first came to LA and I was doing hair there, I used to braid hair. She came pushing up to me like, if you gonna work with me, that's the Keisha I always remember. No matter where I see you in life, I always see that Keisha. Cause I feel like that's why you succeeded is because of that person. So what's next? The album? Yeah, I'm ready for it. That's the whole main objective. But I know it starts with the songs, especially the song I just did about um, the situation with Gibbs. So what's really, really going on? Like, like where, where are you really at with the situation? You're happy who your child's father is. I it's sad. I tell him that all the time. Every time my Father's Day come around, even though we're good co-parenting, mm -hmm. we're not good together. The next one gotta be like. Superb. Grown ass man. <laughs> Grown. Why don't you hook me up with somebody? Who you know? Mm. Exactly. Who exactly. <laughs> you talking about? Who you know? I gave you my advice. Get your money, Mike. Take care of that little one. You know what I'm saying? You got you in the good graces of God to give you a, get, a good co parenting relationship. You That's know? definitely what they got. They definitely get along when it comes to that. We definitely do. I'm actually content with what we got going on right now. Like, he's there for DJ when I work late nights. He makes sure he's there to take him to school. He go 
work out, trying to get his knee right, trying to restore his health. But, you know, we work it out. We co-parent. You get that phone call? Let me see my baby jump through the window. No, he lives with me. Who lives with you? Yeah. See that? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I order some appetizers? <laughs> It's about to get interesting. I live with my baby daddy. <laughs> How far apart is your rooms? Can you hear the other girl moaning? Can you, I mean, what, what's, that, what's that? We don't bring people to the prison there. Well, is that the part where y'all not living together no more? Or is that just the part where you just, what? 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 <laughs> I'm saying, where you at, Sean? Shut up, my Christian. <laughs> this is very interesting to me. I know it's hard for people to understand when I say that Gib and I are living together, but we gotta make the best decisions when it comes to our child. It may not be normal, but hold on, it's working for us. So you married right now, right? Yeah. But do you want to be married? I do need to probably sit down with him and just have this talk. God, <laughs> I need this man not to cry. The key with golf is just focus, you feel me? Keep your shoulders straight, line your shoulders up straight. Look, I haven't hung out with Fizz in a minute, so the fact that he hit me up to come out and hit some balls, we're going to see what's good. What's been going on, man? We having the New Bay video premiere party, and I need you there. You got to come through. Honestly, bro, I might not even be able to make that, man. The BM, Monice, she done broke up with her girlfriend. What? So I'm back on full-time daddy duty right now. I'm very supportive of Monice and AD. But it's been a lot of arguing around their household. So Cam is spending all his time with daddy. I think that's gonna be a tough pill for Chanel West Coast to swallow. <laughs> I tell her you're not coming, she's gonna be tight. Yo. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's hole in one. Oh! Ew. Who that? That's Bob. Hold on, oh. baby. Glad you can make it on the wall, man. Appreciate you. My OG Bobby Brown, you know, he's been like a mentor to me. Seeing him back with a new addition after all these years is just making my head turn. So I had to bring him here today so we could chop it up. I was having a conversation with Bobby at the barbershop. Yeah. You know, about putting my group back together. When I seen y'all movie, man, it reminded me of so much that we went through. Bro. I was like, damn, man. You know, we left at the pinnacle of our career. It was just... Everybody wanted to go their separate ways. We still are young. We still can do it. Have you talked to him over? Nah, man, I ain't brought it up. I don't know what space everybody's in. I think you should be, you know, the initiator. Mm -hmm. Who would you call first? Probably Bug. You know, I'm godfather to his children, you yeah. know? If y'all two are still cool, it'll make it a lot easier for you two to go to the other two. Well, the other one, Raz, he in China. Yeah. He been living out there for years. What? Yeah. What you think Omarion would say? That's the question. Coming from your perspective, when one person takes off and they're successful, mm -hmm. how do you feel about stepping back into something that you feel like you don't necessarily need? When I first went solo, I didn't miss nobody. I was just like, you know, I wanted to do my own thing. Right. But as the years went on, you start to miss your friends. You know what I'm saying? You realize what's, what's important. Real and talk. I don't see nobody selling a bunch of records these days. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's about touring. Exactly. It's about touring. It's about getting out there and giving the people exactly what they want. I want to see them. Me so, too. <laughs> I'll pay for tickets. <laughs> you know, I think Bobby is right. All the fans been calling out, begging for the reunion. And now it's just something I can't ignore. I don't know how receptive the other guys in my group are going to be to this, but it's worth a try. I appreciate you coming okay. out on G. Oh, man. I'm going to take man. your advice, man. Let's get this game started. No Let's doubt. Go. I'm going to go holler at Boog first, though. Uh -huh. Really see where he stand with things, you feel me? After speaking to OG Bobby Brown, I can see Beach and back on the road. But before that happens, I got to meet up with a few of the fellas and see if we can really do this. Me and Boog probably the closest, so I hit him up first. Man, you hit the gym? I'm hoping. Cam is hoping. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's tripping me out. You see, to see that little dude out there. You know, he going on eight this right. year, so. We can do a new, a new baby B2K or something. Man. <laughs> B2K Juniors. Real talk, though. People been hitting me up about B2K. I chopped it up with Bobby Brown. And he, like, just telling me it's time. Like, the world is is missing all of the groups. He's trying to get back on the road. I talked to 
Pleasure P, Pretty Ricky, and he was even like, y'all can come co-headline with us right. if everybody was on the same page. But the position that I hold at the film company now, I'm vice president over there, you know what I mean? It's like, that brand can be bad for my business if it ain't right. For me, it's really like a no. When Bull gave me this potential, no, I was a little bit surprised, you know, I didn't figure like, it would be coming from him. We worked so hard as kids to build what we built, and the foundation is still there. You asking me to take a risk with you? It's more so like, do I got your blessing to say that Boog is a part of it? Am I the first step? You know what I mean? Have you spoke to anybody else? I talked to Raz. Is it a situation you would say yes to moving forward without him? I'm not against it, but you know, oh, it's definitely like, he's out, you know what I mean? So I feel like he's in a space where he still feels like he can make a hit. I just want to try to put B2K back together. In my mind, I'm going to be honest with you, it's impossible. This is the start, and you know, I definitely got to sit down and have a conversation with O. I feel like that's B2K right there. What are you going to walk in there with into the meeting that is basically your blazing gun? The bag. <laughs> I'm really not about to let this situation die out until I follow up on every opportunity out there. I gotta sit down with Omarion and see if he's willing to put this show back on the road. I can't say yes, but I can't say no. Really wanna get done. You need to come to the table with bread in the same conversation. After April made it clear that Omarion wasn't with the B2K reunion, I quickly went to my plan B, Ray J. What up, what up, it's poppin'. So today I put together this little vibe section to see if we could move forward with this super group lineup. What's poppin'? Waiting on Bull, he should be here any minute, I just hit him. Cause I got a whole lot of ideas in. You know what I'm saying? My black African brothers. <laughs> What's up, oh, man? man? Pull me out out of the works again. Man. In all honesty, I never told Boog that we would be sitting in a session with Ray J today. I wasn't sure how Boog would react to me asking other people to step into B2K. I wanted to kind of fill everybody in and see how it goes. I've been trying to put this group back together and all the pieces don't look like they're coming to the puzzle. And, you know, we kind of need another name. I happened to go to Ray's show and I was like, Ray, what you got going on? You feel me? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That you knew, yo. I came here to bounce around ideas, but it seems like I'ma have to just audition myself. Then drop the ball at communicating with everybody from the jump. Basically, what he's trying to say is, I'm the new Omarion. It would never be like we trying to stun on the homie or so keeping the brand alive because the checks are sitting there and nobody's collecting. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, fam. This is a lot for me right now. I wasn't expecting to walk into this. I thought everybody was gonna come with they Ray 2K. Yo, yo. Or B2K. <laughs> I was only gonna pull this out if we was all in agreement. Yo, hey, hey, I'm no. serious. <laughs> you guys is really not realistic to me. Neither one of y'all or myself is at the level of what B2K left off. Why don't we just like see, man, just try to vibe. You know, if we really craft it the right way, it could work. I personally feel like B2K is a brand that needs to have original members. Touching that brand, that's like putting a, a, a fake Michael Jackson on the stage. Huh? Did this dude just call me a fake Michael Jackson? I know you think B2K is the biggest thing that you've ever done, but this right here, some corny I would bring a whole nother wave of vocals and harmony as opposed to what was in the past to take it a step up vocally. Shots fired. So you wanna follow me? Um, no, not right now. Yo, hold up, man. Like, right now, y'all both wrong. I didn't come here to referee no ego bullshit. Yeah, it's on me for not telling both sides about this but at the end of the day, realize the bag that's in front of you. Don't act like B2K is the biggest thing and why we here. We've had number one records. We've ran the world. I'm trying to see how talented y'all are to see if we can edge. I think you're out of line. Let's just get that clear. There ain't no clear. Well, you gotta get that clear. Numbers don't lie. Come sit over there to get to it. What? What? I'm just saying, like... Yo, 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 yo. chill, day, chill, chill. For real, we could take a fade right now. Just me and you. Oh, oh, oh. We could take oh, a fade. This ain't even that day. And squash everything else. Hey, what are you real. doing? What you mean? I'm just saying, it's just man to man. 
We can take a fade and call it a day. My what's happening? We outside. Let's just leave it at that. Talking about this what level they on, we was getting the out of here. B2K might have been popping in. Like you still talking. I'm talking to both of y'all. What's up? Should all work this out like me. You know, first off, I really want to apologize for leaving y'all both in the blind. I just felt disrespected. Bug was saying, well, let me come over here and sit down and tell you. Like, I, I don't know what that means. You got to a point where I could tell that it was escalating. You was becoming more and more aggressive. That's two pit bulls looking at each other in each other's eyes. After a while, it's going to go. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? how I felt. And mm -hmm. I feel like. You know, if I was disrespectful and rubbed you the wrong way, I apologize. Where you made the comment to say, B2K is bigger than everything we've all done. Like, individually. But individually is not fair because I'm not in a group. This meeting wasn't to see who's the bigger star. You know, that's what got us in trouble the last time. It's time for everybody to just apologize so we can all move on because this has been a complete disaster. With the whole fake Michael Jackson it was just going to the next level to me. And that's when you start jabbing too. You was, you, you, that was before the clear and all that. You start jabbing too. Started right there. I just felt like I was being belittled. Nah, because nah. B2K is who they are and Ray J is who they are. These are household names. If I was disrespectful, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Man, I appreciate both of y'all being able to just come sit down and talk like men and not be out here just running miles, just talking reckless and doing stupid Right, I respect, I respect the fact that that didn't happen. Here's the biggest question. What are we going to do now? We leave it here, you know? If there's business in the future, there's business in the future. But right now, I think we just leave it where it is. Well, it's all good with me. You know, it's all good with me. At this point in my life, I can't keep carrying dead weight. You know, I have to move forward. If it's going to be without them, of course, I'm going to continue to do music. I want to give the people what they deserve. Since we ain't with it, what's next for y'all? Keep my ass in the studio. Well, I believe in y'all, man. Yes, sir. The solo artist. The solo artist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't no I in team, but it's an I in win. <laughs>
it just feels different here. And I ain't gonna lie, waking up to this every day, sometimes I do feel like my soul. Are you LA, Brent? No, no, don't you do that. <laughs> don't you do that. <laughs> <Are> you <sure? laughs> no. Oh my God. Well, hello there. Hey, girl. I met Black China a couple of years ago, and ever since, we've been stuck like glue. So what's going on, what's up? Girl, just working. Finishing up Bad Baby, of course. What's up with you? Well, I want to like tap into like this whole music scene. Oh my gosh, that is like music to my ears. You got everything that a star needs. What kind of music you want to do? A good Drizzy Drake. Drizzy Drake? Drizzy Little Minute? Little Sound Love? Little Smooth, like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. You have to like definitely prep me because I like watch you like work with various artists. So at the same time, like I actually really want you to like take me serious too. With you, you're a friend, but it's a whole different Britney when, when it comes to this artistry. You know that once you drop this music, it's gonna make headlines. Yeah, hopefully like positive, because like I'm just sick of people making me look a certain way. You are now Black China the artist. Apple Watch for a long time. She's very talented. We're both from Compton, and Apple can be a little on the hard side sometimes, but I understand her. Apple, you showed up. You know, I had to come uh, with something. I know, you look so beautiful. Then, and then you got the homie here, my bro. I mean, hello. I've been on Apple for so long. Right. You have? Jesus Christ. Right. I had no idea. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was there when Apple, she was like, these people just don't get me. Man. <laughs> look at her now. Look how far you've come with it, just right. by being persistent. Right. Hey, that's you know what? I, I love you on the death, but I got to go. All right, come right back. All right. I'm so glad you came. Thank you so much. Hey. I just took a sip, took another sip, like, oh, it's a Friday. Turn it to a freak night. Hey, I'm just scrubbing off the dog. It's a lit night. with a lot of controversial artists, from K. Michelle to Bad Baby, and now I got Black China. I was y'all gonna bring some fire ass beats for you. Bitch, I'm out of breath and I even did nothing. I've cooked up some beats, and today is our first studio session. I cannot wait. You ready? Hell no, I ain't ready. I feel kind of like scared. No, you shouldn't be. This is gonna be your new home. Yeah. The great thing about recording that I've learned is that you can always go back. You know what I'm saying? So this is where you make your mistakes. This is where you cry. This is where you, you, you have that therapy for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And I know that you have a lot to talk about as an artist. And I want to help you bring that out, for real. This is like maybe like something that um, might be like a stress relief of stuff that's like kind of like going on with my life. I have to like look at like tabloids, all the negativity. I got to be a mom. I got to be a friend. So. You're a super boss up woman, though. You've conquered so many things, you know what I mean, on your own. And you've been strong through everything. I definitely take China more seriously than somebody like April. She has determination. She has hustle. She knows that it's going to be an uphill battle. She knows that there's going to be critics. But she also knows that she has something to say, and she's not letting those haters stand in her way. Aside from everything, um, like, the only thing that's, like, holding me back was, like, that relationship, like, with my mom. And I've talked to my mom. I'm working on that relationship. Yeah, I'm so proud of you with that. For and um, I feel like you should do the same. Okay. Yeah, but, Chai, it's not, it's not easy doing that, especially the way that my mom did me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I haven't talked to her in, like, five, six years because, like, the last time I talked to her, she put me out her house, you know what I'm saying? She kicked me out. I had to sleep in my car. I was, like, out on the streets, sleeping in downtown L.A., you know what I'm saying? I had to fight my way to where I am now. Maybe she was going through something in her life at that time, whatever. I mean, she was, you know what I'm saying? She was on yeah. drugs, she was drinking, she was doing a lot. So just have, like, some type of sympathy. Put it aside, breathe in, breathe out, and just talk it through and be, like, the better person, you know what I mean? No, you're right. I think on it. I am really hesitant about reaching out to my mom at this point. I really do appreciate China, like, encouraging me, but I don't know. When it comes to a relationship with my mother, 
I don't have one. I specifically remember my mother pawning our items for drugs. She took my baby picture, she took my, my, my jewelry, she stole money from me. It's made me hard, it's made me really tough, and I just thank God for music because if I didn't have that, I don't really know where I would be, honestly. I don't wanna talk about this no more. I wanna get to these beats. You ready? Here we go. Tell me to shine. shine, shine. Just know your future divine. But right now, this is my life. My parents up there credit, I pray you were setting. My mama stay working, she trying it. My dad in the other room, hoping that one day she finally forget it. I know he regret it. Just wish I could help him, always in a hurry. I wish I could just wipe away all your worries. I wish I would. I know you'd be proud. That's one time to start reading some doubt. You never did. Always believe. Always knew I had a trick up my sleeve. Always knew it'd be steak. Even though we used to die with thieves, the world is so cold. Woo! Mickey Monday was a student at the Yo-Yo School of Hip Hop. I mean, he's from the Crenshaw District. He's a dope artist and a dope performer. Guess who I brought to come check him out? My homeboy, Corrupt, Young Gotti. Sir, OG, my man, you are the one. If he says that Mickey Monday is all that, trust and believe Mickey Monday is all that. All right, so you know I've been waiting to connect you guys for a long time. After seeing his performance, what do you think? I think you're an assassin. Performance is hip hop, but look at him. Mm -hmm. That's rock and roll. So growing up on Crenshaw and Adams as the only white person, get a little tricky. I was always different. I was always made fun of when I was a kid for being different no matter where I was. When I was here, I was the only white person. If I went over here in the people's eyes, I was trying to be something I'm not. But anybody that knows me knows that this is me all day, every day. I work with a lot of people. Mike Will, 808 Mafia, Akon, 1500 or nothing. A lot of the great producers in the world. What made you want to rap? This is the first music that I knew. My dad listened to NWA, to Snoop, to the East Side. Do you worry about not being a part of the African-American community where hip hop comes from? Does it bother me or does it bother other people? Music don't have a color. I know Mickey Monday since we was kids sitting in the car rapping, changing tires, and he worked his ass off to get where he at right now. It don't matter what anybody thinks. So you working on your album? Oh, yeah. But I think I waited so long till now, it's like it's a nervous thing. My family always on my head about getting things together. You know, my pops just lost his job. So wow. it's like, you know, my family really- pressure on you. Yeah, it's always pressure, but you know, pressure makes diamonds, so at the end of the day, I know my star power, I could be something special. Being different is a gift and a curse, and I always use it as a gift, you know me? I'm one of them people that, like, I love my back against the wall, because I'm a fighter, so I come out swinging. Me and you gonna chop it. Yes, sir. Hello. You know? The yellow tonight. <laughs> so I just wanted to come out here and, and say thank you, bro. This is my first tour. I ain't never gonna forget that. Being on my first tour with a legend like T-Pain is huge, especially when you're a new artist. And this is a perfect distraction for what's going on back at home. Let's make it happen, yeah? Man, love, bro. Let's make it happen, bro. All right. Absolutely. Appreciate it. That color, I don't know. Hey. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. First thing on the agenda would be a new artist that we are bringing to the table, Larissa. She's 22. Let me say uh, something first. Just... Um, not quite sure if you guys downloaded the links that we sent, but this girl is amazing. So let's see who we can connect her with as far as writers, producers. Anything else anyone wants to add? I guess we rap. Yeah, we rap. That was All a good right. meeting today, guys. So rap. I'm Trisha Anna, and I'm a head A&R for a comic music. I connect the dots in the industry, and I get done. Well, you look so, nice. Thank you. So do you. I, I don't like know about the nipples in the boardroom. <laughs> Well, you could buy me some new bras. I'll just give you the money, you get it. I want you to come with me. No, I'm not doing that. Husbands always go with their wives to try on lingerie. No, they don't. Yes, Husbands they do. Husbands stay in the room and wives surprise them with lingerie. That's <laughs> okay. how that works. Many years ago, a mutual friend that we had introduced me to Akon. I started to love him and his family. I have four children, Akon has nine, and he's always loved my children as if they're his own. Our wedding was held in Africa, in Gambia. Finding out he had multiple wives was a bit shocking for me. How's Mickey? How's he doing? Good? Yeah, as far as I know. I don't really speak to him as much, but he called me recently to see how I was doing. Akon and I split up for about a year and a half. Mickey was sort of a rebound. We were good friends, I had needs, and he fulfilled a couple of them at the time. 
you know, I put him with a new company. He's a superstar, you know, we always believed in him. I just think that the patience is gonna be the key for him. Yeah. And I hope he's happy, I hope it all works out. You know? Nothing but the best for There him. it is. <laughs> I didn't think you was gonna make it. That was a long drive. Bro. Yeah, man, I've been yeah. in the car for a minute. Yo, you might remember Marcus Houston from You Got Served, Roger from Sister Sister, or Batman from Immature. Not only were we a part of two of the biggest boy bands of our time, we're cousins and now business partners. We run a full film company called Footage Films. Well, what's going on, man? I ain't seen you in a minute. I mean, everything's been going good. You know, we've been having company meetings. We miss you. Trust me, I'm like yeah. trying. What I really want to talk to you about, we halfway through this tour, right? They keep saying, Immature should have been on this tour. So I go and I holler at Gary and I'm like, yo, you know, Gary the promoter, I'm like, yo, I think there's a, there's a tour for Immature. <laughs> He's like, I think it could work. So I'm like, let me bring my boy out to Fresno. Uh, I'm kind of happy well, you didn't bring the why, wife that's in. That's why I'm saying? out of Fresno. Immature need to be on stage performing for their fans because the whole reunion thing is like the big trend right now. B2K, we gave our fans what they needed. You know what I mean? Jagged Edge, 112, Genuine, God, they went on the 90s tour. But Immature fans didn't get what they wanted. If I could get Immature on tour and it be a success as well, it would move me forward in my power and position as being the new young exec. Y'all would be doing a service to y'all fans that have supported you and made you. I won't even lie, we've thought about it, you know, but I don't know <laughs> where it'll go. Where it'll go. Right. Us being indivi right. three individual men almost rounding 40. Right. I understand how to deal with all the different dynamics. So if you trust me, you know what I'm saying, I can talk to everybody. Yeah. And I believe, truthfully, I believe that I can get everybody to see the big picture and we can go out and we can make history, make a lot of money and do it for the fans, man. I mean, let me talk to the boys. Talk to them and you can feel like yeah. the vibe, like, yeah, mm, well, I don't think this is gonna rock. Yeah. So today is the day I'm meeting with my guy, Romeo, Marcus Houston, and LDB, the boys from Immature. What's Yo. up, bud? <laughs> what it do, though? So I talked to my cousin, and Marcus said that he was with it. Now all I gotta do is meet with his other two members. So I'm gonna meet with Jerome and Kelly and try to convince them to get on the stage. And if I can get them to agree, I can make a fee. Yeah, man. It's good to see y'all, though, man. What? What's been up, man? I know we here to talk about a few things. So let's get down to business. See, why you gotta hit me with the mafia talk? Like, it's yeah, like, it's like, I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, like, you know, uh, so the time is money. You know, uh, I have business to take care of. When it comes to B2K and Immature, there's a lot of similarities. Both groups broke up because the lead singers wanted to go solo. But there's one thing that makes a Big difference, B2K always had drama in between us. Immature, they've always stayed friends and been cool, you know, never having no real differences. So I think with that factor being the difference, I can really get it done. In a nutshell, I had been out on the road and I'm just seeing the feedback from the fans and, you know, continuously they keep saying, where's Immature? You know, they always tour with y'all while they wasn't on the show. It's a real bag out there for y'all. And right now it's, it's no better time because the fans is in the moment. I was down from the jump unless, you know, everything made sense, the numbers. We kind of like split everything like down the middle. As it is right now, the breakdown between you guys would be Marcus 50 and then you guys split in the other 50. It wouldn't be a 33, 33, 33. I feel like it, as a group, we should all be even as well. I, mean, I don't think, I don't think, honestly, let me, I'll just stop you. Yeah. I feel like, you know, that's fair because I'm gonna have to do a lot of work. I mean, he is the lead singer, and he also has another bulk of the show that he has to carry with well, his solo performance, which is in the contract. It's not solely based off of what Marcus is demanding. This is what the tour is offering us to say, hey, this is the show that we would want to go out with. Yeah. At the end of the day, the other two guys gotta realize that Marcus doing five of his solo records on the tour. When B2K went out, we were all clear that, you know, Omari and I was gonna make a little bit more than us other guys. But we also acknowledge his other accomplishments. So they got to do that for Marcus as well. If it's not split, but do you feel like they're to split that way? Yeah. Like I wanted to, I want everything down the middle. I feel like I should be getting more. You set in stone on 50? Well, I will say this. 
The bag is not the same with it just being an immature show without Marcus Houston songs. And it's almost not a done deal without him doing those five records. Well, I'm not, I'm not interested. I mean, if it's not gonna be split like down the middle like that, I'd rather not, you know what I mean? Okay. I heard your conversation, I heard your conversation, and everybody's set in stone on what it is, and you're supposed to get more and all of that, and we've never did that before, and I'm not going for it in the future. In all of my years of observing, learning from Immature, I've never seen anything but brotherhood and love coming from them. Y'all can step foot on the stage without me. So tonight to see them divided off of money and percentages and this and that, like it's crazy and it's really throwing me off. But what I will say is the deal is not done because Boogie don't give up that easy. So the Millennium Tour has been a long road. In between the craziness with Raz and the tension with Fizz and O, nobody really thought we was going to make it to the end. But look, we're almost there for the final two shows of this weekend. We start in Arizona, then we head to Vegas for the grand finale. So folks are headed to the house that we set up for them. It's going down. We about to celebrate. But first, I got to handle a little bit of business. Yo, yo. Hey. Good How you doing, baby? All right. And I got big plans for my next bag. Getting immature on tour, I show everybody I'm the man to get it done. But it just hasn't been as easy as I thought it was going to be. I want everything down the middle. I feel like I should be getting more. Well, I'm not, I'm not interested. So I've been talking to the guys and fill them out, and I think it's worth another conversation at the very least. Look, and what's yours? Back on tour. I'm ahead of the game. Okay. Yeah, I, see. Man, I just want you to see the vision. We can do this. I'm not mad at the vision. Yes. You already know what's up with me. Yeah, like, that's a lot of years in the game. It is. Hey! What's going on with you, boy? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, man. So I didn't tell you I invited Kel to come sit down with us because I didn't want you to, like, do one of the, like, I, I got something to do. After Kel walked out the meeting, I thought it'd be wise to give him a second to breathe. But I reached out to him, and he agreed to meet with me again. Like, for real, for real, it's an opportunity for y'all to really go out there and satisfy y'all fans. Y'all have a brand that's legendary. So I felt like, let me get my boys here because Rome is with it, and I felt like it was more so between y'all. I don't feel like he was trying to hear what I was presenting to the table. No, I was trying I was trying to hear it. I just felt like it didn't make sense. If we was all going to come back to collectively and do that as a group, it all should have been equal highs always been. And I, and I agree with that when we were a group. But like when it came to the tour, if I was going to do my songs or my five songs and do a set, that's like, you know. That's another show. That's another show. Yeah, at the end of the day, we all fit. I feel like we can all get a bag, and I feel like it's something that the last concert show that we did in L.A., that was one of the most fun times I ever had on stage, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I had a lot of fun, too. Yeah, being able to be back on stage. It was so like, good. It was a good feeling. No amount of money is worth your happiness. And so I'll come down on the percentage. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Compromise. Compromise in for the bag, baby. Now, we can all get money if we in this together. But more importantly, the immature brotherhood is still intact. Even just being solo, I always was used to, you know, performing with y'all anyway, so that's, yeah, that's what we have fun. Well, y'all got me excited. It's not good right now. <laughs> we can do that. But when y'all just was talking about that, it gave me an idea. I was thinking we always do family stuff or whatever, and I've been working with Ray, Ray J, you know what I'm saying? And I was thinking, like, blast from the past, Ray J, Immature, yeah, that'd be dope. you know what I'm saying? You know, Ray J was in our band, Immature, back in the day, him and Brandy. Just being honest, me and Ray has, we have some, some history. Yeah. I don't have beef with anyone, but sometimes people got beef with me. In the past, me and Ray J was gonna go at it. I'm the new Omarion. Let's just get that clear. There ain't no clear. Well, you gotta get that clear. Numbers don't lie. Come sit over there, you get it clear. We can take a fake, right? We resolved our issues like adults, but now I find out that there's an issue between Marcus and Ray. Whatever it is, I hope it's not that deep, because adding Ray to the bill is going to translate in ticket sales and more money for all of us. Before we can do any business, I, I feel like me and Ray would have to, like, kind of iron out a few things. Well, look, let me set it up. I'll call Ray, see how you feel about it, you know what I'm saying? And um, sure. I think we can get it done. My thing is, yeah. I, don't, I don't want any drama regarding the tour. Right. I'm sure but you... I try to say, like, it's going to be good. I'm saying? sure you said that oh, with your tour, always... too. So... <laughs> It's gonna be good. <laughs> but what I will say is, everybody's excited about the mutual. Yeah. I'm about the money, I'm about the grind, I'm about the struggle, I'm about the hustle, I made it. Now that I officially got Marcus, Rome, and Kel immature, signed on for the tour, 
I got another idea to make it just a little bit bigger. I want to bring my boy Ray J out. But apparently, him and my cousin Marcus got some unfinished business, or shall I say, some old issues that they got to air out. Hey. There you go. What's going on? What? Boy, it's back to you, brother. Hey, good to see you. I see you. I see you been sprushing, too. I got the sprush. It's looking right. Huh. <laughs> What's been up, though, man? Man, it's been good, man. God is good, my brother. What's up? How you doing? I'm loving it, man. You yeah. know, yeah. enjoying that tour. I appreciate y'all letting me rock with y'all. That was a big night. That was a big night. The crowd, the lights whole thing. I'm like, I need more. OK, well, see, look, this is why I wanted you to come, you know what I'm saying, up here and talk to me, because I'm putting the Immature Tour together. Yeah? Yeah, because the whole B2K thing, you know what I mean? I'm, all, I'm like, hey, it's a whole nother life, you know what I'm saying, with Immature like that. Yeah. I don't know if you know, but I'm putting this little LA teaser, you know what I'm saying, Feel Good show together For with real? them. And when you came out on the show, everybody went crazy. Yeah. So I'm like, OK, I wanted to see if you would just, you know, come out and bless L.A., you know? Don't be bull I'm not bull with you. Boog knows that I was supposed to be one of the original members of Immature. I mean, I did the audition, but I didn't make the cut. Maybe that was one of the best things that's ever happened for me. Who knows? But why would you try to put me back together with a group that never wanted me? And also, we had beef before. I also talked to Marcus about this, you know what I'm saying? I talked to Kelton about it, and I said, hey, man, I want to do this thing. Yeah, I want to do this thing with Ray, you know? And Marcus is like, you know, me and Ray got a lot of history. So I said, yo, Mark, I'm going to see if Ray is good, you know what I'm saying, to come meet up here. Listen, me and Marcus Houston do have a history. We both been on TV since we was young. I mean, we was pretty cool until I felt like I was robbed for a TV show that I was about to be on. You know, me and Mark got into it. Yeah. happened, and I lost myself. He wasn't, you know, getting along. Now we grown, man. Everybody is, I think, just in a totally different place from the last time y'all even seen each other. There you go, M mother H. So these two guys haven't seen each other in over 20 years, and the last time they did see each other, they was kids. So I wouldn't call it a beef. I probably would just say it was a misunderstanding. I wanted y'all to come <clears throat> here today because it's a lot of money on the table. I talked to Ray about possibly coming and doing the L.A. show. I told him about the Immature Tour, you know, but when we talked about it, you said it was like some beef that y'all had about a role or something. I don't want to sit down and do any business yet because, you know, we have had some, some issues in the past. In order to, to come together and do business, we got to sit down as men first. Yeah, because we never really talked. We like, never talked about We it. never had an issue in, in person. Yeah, I know that that you had thought, like, you know, a situation about when I did cuts, that you thought, like, it was it was something that you were supposed to do. I was supposed to play on a show called Cuts. That means I was going to be a star of a new sitcom. I told Marcus, hey, guess what? I'm about to get this role tomorrow. I know they're going to hit me. Tuesday? Damn, ain't nobody called me about the role. I thought I had it. Nah, you know they gave it to Marcus Houston. Huh? I felt like I was robbed. I had no idea that you was even involved. I know for sure, but I swear to God. Let me, let me tell you this. I'm just sitting back there. No, I never hold on. No, 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 I felt like I missed out on a lot of bread. We talking like two, three M's, OK? So the thing is, you feel like Marcus called on your on your play that you had already in motion. Yeah, and it's like, it and can't took like, it from you. But it, it's the game, though, so it was, a, it was a chess move. From your eyes, though, it, it was, was a chess, a chess move. move. So you wasn't even at the screen test. There was no need for the screen test. You can go back and forth with it. But look, I'm telling you right now, as, as brothers, as family, I didn't do that. I didn't take that role from you. I wasn't at the final audition, fam because I already had the role. That's neither here or there. I ignored it, act like, hey, it. you right, I'm sorry. Let's get this money, I'm too old to be arguing with <laughs> God damn it, my belly's big and I need to work out. At the end of the day, like, I could have approached it different, like, I got real mad, you know, and I apologize for that, you know what I'm saying? Because I said some Definitely. that was just, you know, uncalled for. When you young and you trying to figure it out, sometimes you, you go into this defense mode and everybody's the enemy. That's true. That's that way. So I get why a lot of times people were scared of working with me because I come through and I'll be lit. Yeah, yeah. And then a little too lit. Yeah. But to go on tour now, it would be dope. Yeah. I just 
just want to keep it simple. Let's do the L.A. show. And then we, we'll see what, what happens with that. We got to do this, man. You know, I think it's something there. I think we, we should. We got to figure this out. I mean, I mean that's man, I, I, I'll do it. Speaking of that, this weekend coming up, we're going to be in Vegas. And I got a big crib, Paris, you know, some other, other people going to be out there. Yeah. I want you to come out, you know what I'm saying? Damn, it's my it's my daughter's birthday. Man, it ain't but, but hop, skip, jump. I try to get, take a jet over there real quick. I try to wiggle it. Well, I'm going to get out the way, man. But if I nail this show, that got to have a new title, fam. Ray Mature. I'm <laughs> <laughs>
higher than me. It's a girl that may be a little younger than me. There have been plenty of times that I've been overlooked because I'm a darker African-American woman and it's not a great feeling. Talent should speak for itself, but unfortunately society doesn't make it that way. They look at looks and what's on the surface before they look at the actual talent. Right now, I'm writing more for myself and I'm stepping out from behind the scenes. I'm really excited because my homegirl Apple, she's gonna introduce me to one of the West Coast legends, Yo-Yo. I'm so proud of that, I'm so happy for you. Yo-Yo is somebody that I definitely looked up to. She is the epitome of a strong black woman who really broke through a male-dominated industry. That just gave me so much inspiration that I could make it in this industry. I'm a brown skin woman and it's hard for us. It just is, you know what I mean? But I got everything I I'm need. I'm happy like, that you wasn't like one of those people who just let that get to you and let you, you know what I'm saying, lose yourself. But yeah. in the day, us, we built for this. Like, we can't help it. Look how hot you are. Like. with my mom, I feel like a piece of me that has been broken for so long is finally starting to heal. And even though we're still working on rebuilding our relationship, I feel incredibly fortunate that I have friends that I can call family. Hi, boo. Hey. Shina and I have been hard at work getting her music together. And with my help, it ain't no way that she ain't gonna kill the game. Ooh, I like what you did with this new place. I know, I was like, I needed to like switch it up a little bit. Well, I just wanted to come over because I'm really excited because one of the West Coast legends, Yo-Yo. has been performing at her 30th anniversary party. That's crazy. I'm really excited. She's done movies. She's like toured all over the world. I mean, she is that chick. I'm excited for you. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a good thing. I am looking forward to Yo-Yo's event. We're not only celebrating her birthday, but we're celebrating 30 years of her being in the game. She is a successful actress, entrepreneur, rapper, and creative. I mean, there's nothing bossier than that. But anyway, now that we've gotten in the studio, do you feel like a rapper now? I feel, feel good. Like I definitely have to perfect it. I have to be like steady, stable, all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it'll like reflect like in the music. That takes time though. Even though you've only been dabbling in music for like two years, it's really refreshing that I can work with somebody who's also my friend. You know, I've had yeah. friends in the past that ended up ending our friendship because you of, you know, work. You're friends with Lyrica. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't work with her. Why? Because she basically tried to use me, and I'm just like, I can't ever trust somebody like that. Plus, <laughs> she got the nerve to be online the other day, talking about my body, talking about my complexion. this IGB for me. I mean, as a brown-skinned woman in America, in the music industry, I fought hard to get where I'm at without riding the coattails of a man. And I really didn't appreciate her talking about my complexion. Don't be a colorist. Don't be racist against your own kind. What did you say? Now you know I said something bad. <laughs> both of y'all, but I don't want to be like in the middle of something that makes me feel weird. I honestly think that as like black women in the entertainment like industry, I think y'all should probably maybe have like a conversation if y'all was like friends before. Cause it's some type of like hurt somewhere, but I'm not gonna like, you know, dig, you know, I'm not but you know trying how, to put you back in that. But you know how place. I am though. You know that once I'm done, I'm done and I don't look back. getting our relationship to a place of trust and understanding. But Summer Bunny popping up at Yo-Yo's party took me back to all those pissed feelings from the past. And I'm definitely struggling to let them go. Hi, Sush. Hi, Boo. How are you? <laughs> Black China and I have been friends for three years now, and she has definitely seen her fair share of relationship troubles, so I feel like I can use her advice. I just need to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do now. I kind of ordered before you. Oh, you wasn't playing no game. 
Stephen good? Dealing with stuff, as usual. What about you? Girl, my life is a tornado right now. My stuff is in storage. I've been staying in hotels. Well, if you need help, I'm, I'm here for you. You were the first person that called me about that uh, bunny hop chick. It was weird how, when I saw her, how'd you see her? There was an event that this bitch was at. She had the nerve to have an attitude like I had done something to her. It was just more so her attitude. She, girl, she started crying. It's like, what are you crying for? It looks like she hoped for more. Like, I think she like, like, like thought they was gonna be something or something. Say one was like, bitch, I was mad at Lyrica. You was something to do. I'm going back to my wife. Wait, one doesn't understand. Women, with us, when you do like that, oh no, we start side eyeing you. It's like the sex or nothing don't even be the same because you be like, uh, you was just doing that with such and such, and it is, you just start looking at yeah, them different. I'm, yeah, you know I'm, what I'm yeah, saying? I know what you mean. Do you really honestly think that you're not gonna get back with anyone? Okay, I'm 50 50. 50 of me wants to stay because I love him, and that's yeah, my father and my sure. child. We have so many memories. We have a beautiful baby together. He's all I know. I don't even know what it would be like to date. Trust me, ain't nothing up there. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. I would try, like, even, like, like some type of counseling. Yeah, I've just been. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always like a, a boil. Like it's always like a boil before like boil. boils over. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Thank, Thank you. you. Share. And some forks, please. Mm -hmm. Once you start focusing like on yourself and stuff, like maybe it's, uh, starting to do music again. Cause I did a song with um with Britney, a few songs actually. Hmm. So I'm like that's, working with her, and I want to do like some songs. She's with talented. You. Yeah. She's like talented. Britney. I don't I don't I don't like her though, but she's talented. She just like fakes that nice role, but she's really not. She said something about my son, so if I see that bitch at this point, I don't f with her. Barney B, she went along the lines to say I don't love myself, and then she said some like little sly shades some about my son. If she wanted to fight, we could have just fought. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go in on a bitch. I don't f with her. Period. Bitch, it is on site. Maybe you and Brittany can like cash it out because I want to work with you and I want to work with Brittany because I don't want, I want to actually work with like black females that's like, that know what the f they're doing. If she was pleasant, I can be pleasant and I can well, get over just give when, people are, when people are pleasant. Just, wait, I think we should meet up, seriously. I'm going to put us together. Who's us? Me, you and Brittany. It's not going to be no hostile environment. It's not going to be none of because it's Auntie Chai. Chai, you know how peaceful I am. I know, so let's make it even more peacefuler. that Barney B wanted to reconcile. So I'm actually walking into this with a pretty decent attitude, but my guards are still up. So what's up? Nothing. How you feel? Honestly, today I don't feel that good. My head has been hurting all day. Listen, sometimes when I get a headache, it's just because my wig be too tight. <laughs> you too. Well, mine ain't, no, like, mine ain't too tight this time. I'm really trying to be the mature, bigger person here. And let's see what happens. anything back. For someone who doesn't think about me and feels like I have beef with you, you show sure giving me a lot of energy, honey. Lyrica said that it was on site, so is it on site? That's what I want to know. Let's see what you have to say when you see me in my face. My real face, not the Bosch me you have. Hi, Hi, boo. Hi, boo. Have a seat. Hi, Lyrica. You said it was on site. Is it on site? Is what on site? Is it on site? Okay, it's but time's out. So, so that's what you call me here for? Is it on no. site? It's what on site? You said it was on site. Is it, it on site? Is it, oh, wow, you were so off. Is it I'm on not site? trying I to think. Seen, I just want to make sure. Is what on site? about this online? Did you apologize to A1 site? for what you said about Ocean? Is it on site? Honestly, I expected peace. I almost thought she was gonna explain what her real issue is with me, cause I've never done anything to her. So I was looking forward to like, what is she gonna say? Or maybe an apology or whatever. She just showed up cause she's another obsessive fan. Like her, that winter walk, whole loose <laughs> really loves me in real life. I'm out, come on, let's go, we out. Come on, Gator Mouth, it's fine. This is what you it's brought me here for? No, I believe See, I knew, this is what you brought me here for. You saw me were fake, is it on site? You're fake, man. You said to keep the same energy. Right. This girl has a face that only a mother could love. I could stop feeling sorry for her, thinking I'm trying to be mean, or I don't want to be her friend. Who wants to be somebody's friend that acts like this? She need her ass beat. You I got the saying? energy, so That's what's up? You're a fake ass bitch. You're a fake ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid ass bitch. Oh. I got the same 
same energy. Oh. Where's her energy? I thought she was winning. Yes, pick her up. Oh. Miserable, pretend to be more than she is, ass bitch. Leave me alone. I have my own problems I'm dealing with. So listen, can we just sit back and put the back together? You calm down. I'm gonna bring her back in. She's just a hater. She just smacked us. She don't have no kid or no man. She even got a to cheat on her because ain't nobody even look at her ass. So, oops. Hi, Brittany. Can we just can we just talk? Y'all gotta chill, bro. Y'all throwing. Listen. I wait. No, don't say y'all. Nah, but you started. Nah, I didn't say, don't say y'all. I need you to calm down and stop being extra and just sit down as a grown-up. I think that's Just grow right. up. She said it was on side. All right, bye, Brittany. Oh, All right, let's go. Is she gonna my nerves? Thank you. Friends may come and friends may go. Woo! Go. Friends may come. And friends may go. Come on, bro. Friends Let them know. may come and friends may go. Woo! All right, all right, I'm coming out to listen. And then I feel like you should lay on top of that now. Okay. The song Best Friends came out on Brandy's first album. It was like her third single. I came out, I was dancing in the video, did my little dance move. Listen, y'all, just go to tape. Check me out in the Best Friends video real quick. Been here right the you see it? Yeah, that's me in the Kango. And now we get a chance to bring it back to life. The fact that you sound like that is. is, is... Friends may come and friends may go. Brandy's one of my biggest supporters. She's believed in me from the beginning. She always pushes me to go further. I've always seen your potential. I was singing with you all my life, and we have to do it, and we do it together. We launch Ray J and Brandy as a group, as each other's superpower. Please, that is the map. That's going to be crazy. So Ray J and Brandy album? Yeah, Ray J and Brandy album, Ray J and Brandy everything, but we still have no, our own Brandy ending. No, Ray J. No, Ray J. It's going to be Ray J and Brandy. You know why? Let me tell you why. Because back when, it was Brandy's brother. But right now, it's Ray J's sister. But my, it's wait, no, it's for sure. And now, it's Ray J's sister. sister. I promise you, people, we coming, and I love it. You didn't love it so much, but I love being related to you. I, I love swear. being Brandy's so Rob, brother. Let it be what it is. All right. You, you, you came out of every kind of shadow there was on anything in your life, and you, and you moved through that. And now you're a genius at music. You are a genius at music. Ray Brand, Ray Brand. Ray yeah. Brand. Ray Brand, Ray Brand, come back over here. Ray Brand, Ray Brand. That's dope. All right, so what are you doing for this next month? I'm going on tour with Immature. Are you serious? Well, I don't know if I'm going on tour, all right? Wait, 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 but like, wait We're a minute. doing like, a show what, next week. What, how, how did it even get to the point where y'all was able to even say hello? With me and Marcus? Well, I, I really, I really felt like now is just a new, uh, I'm a new person, right? Mm -hmm. So whoever I had a problem with, I you totally wanted to put, it to, put yeah. it to rest because I see things different now. We can do one show. Mm -hmm. If we kill the show, it's possible we could all, you know, take it out on the road, so. But Jerome, though, I'm a little bit, like, concerned about seeing him because I don't know if he knows that, like, what happened, like, with the whole I thing. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't intentional. Like, I can never do something like that intentional because I, I had a low-key crush on Jerome back yeah. in the day. It was a book. It was, like, a, a Jehovah Witness book that had, like, the sharp corners on the side. I threw the book out, mm -hmm. and then it mm -hmm. flew right to Jerome's eye, and I was no, like, I, I was can't. I in the room. I remember when his eye was out. I it, know, like, Dre don't can't. get into details because I, I don't think I'm really super over that because... You know, Jerome had hazel eyes. And so to mess up one of them was just like, but um, it wasn't intentional. Yeah. I don't want him to feel uncomfortable when I'm at the, the show. Love back. Like, bring the love bringing back. Bringing the love back every which way. Brandy got a history with Immature like no other. She used to sing background for Immature. I used to sing background for Immature. I used to play the bass. It's all love. So, you know, I've never been on tour before. I never had a Ray J stage. I've never had a chance to have the smoke, have the rain, have the lights, have the moving on stop. I'm going to make the show something so crazy. 
to where it's undeniable. You ain't never seen a Ray J show before. Think about it. No, right? Well, that's why I want to go all out. I want rain coming from the sky. All right, so it's recycled. The rain come down and then it hit the floor and then it recycles itself and goes back up again, right? Pyro. Boom, explosions coming out the side. I need eight dancers. The best sound. I want the best production. I want the best MD and the best band. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> We're gearing up for the LA show with Immature and Ray J later this week. And it's very important that it goes well because this is a test for the investors to see how much money they want to put up. This is going to determine if we're going on tour or if we're not going on tour. Because a friend like you will only come one. By the hour late, he done brought a whole entourage, three DJs, two dancers, and four dogs. I don't know what the hell is going on. It's like three live crew. Keep going, keep going. Ah! Keep going. Looking good. Right, you got, you got the, you got the dog. Yeah, she a service dog, emotional support for me. Let me fill the stage with y'all, man. I ain't felt the stage. What? In the Did you just leave your dog here? She straight, she trained. <laughs> See, this feels good. I will never lie again Cause you would only be my friend I'm not mad at it. I'm real excited about the possibilities of this tour. I mean, it could be a real revival. Everybody coming together and doing something that the world is gonna appreciate, love, and have fun to, right? This is a revival. But my baby will always take priority over this tour. Family first. I'm just excited. Everything's going perfect with the pregnancy, but there's waves of emotions that happen to a woman when they're pregnant. Things gonna get a little bumpy. Things might get a little grumpy. I'm hoping the LA show can show Princess that these long nights I've been working in the studio really mean something. And now she can go, wow, I'm really proud of it. Okay, so and then the rain. You know how boys to men had it? We go into the rain and then it goes down and I'm boom, boom. If I had one wish, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it goes, one wish, one wish, one wish, doom, 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 doom. Then the smoke comes out, and then I come up off the stage like this, and then I'm rising up. At that point, I'm teary-eyed. I'm gonna try to hold back the tears, but it's gonna be uncontrollable, y'all. Hold on, hold on, see? We're not on tour yet. I'm not gonna get the rain? We can't no, rain we can throw water on you. This is just a show. Test a show. Time out. I'm a little crushed by this, because they should have told me we was giving them appetizer. I don't really appetize, okay? That ain't my thing. I like to go all the way. You go hard, or you stay at home. You don't even got to go home. You already been at home. All right, so this is like a small stage. Yep, small, intimate. All right, so intimate. Yeah, but we can't yeah. do the rain. If we f up the L.A. test show, yeah, we can get the rain for the okay. tour. Now, Ray, he over the top. For me, I need to wait to see how this L.A. show goes before I go making these major decisions. But I'm excited that he's excited. And as crazy as he would make me on the road, the fact that I've dealt with Raz, I could deal with Ray. Y'all yeah, gonna be blown away with what I'm working on now. Hey, I'm with you. Oh, your dog is crazy! <laughs> This past year has been amazing. My group reunited, we did 50 shows. Some people, you know, I got into it with that I really wouldn't want to get into it with, but you know, that's family, that's love, and we'll get over that. So until then, I'm on to my next move. I had enough petty drama for one year. It's time to focus on East Avenue and my music. It's time to be grown. I want to be a grown man now. You gotta see me as grown Zell Swag. It's a lot that Beyonce needs to do. Moving forward, it's all about me. I don't care who's who. I don't care if my best friend is about to fight. So, no, I gotta level up on, with me. I will never lie. Hollywood is full of haters. 
but I know there are great things in store for my future as an A&R, an artist, and a boss. You will always be my friend. I still love my wife. For now, I'm giving her her space. But until the ink dries on the divorce papers, I'm not gonna give up hope. I will never lie again.